So I found this brief design a pancake kit brand identity and I thought, let's do this. One thing that stands in my way is creating mockups that best showcases my packaging designs and what I'm actually capable of. And this leads us to the sponsor of this video, Pigdera. Pigdera is an online tool that offers you more than 5,000 packaging designs, dye lines, and awesome 3D mockups and even motion videos. So in this video, we'll go through my full branding process starting with the logo design and ending with creating realistic mockups using Pigdora. So without further ado, let's bring this brand to life. To give you a little background, today we're designing the brand identity and packaging design of Bake Today, which is a brand that creates pancake cats that are family friendly, flavorful, and easy to make. So first, let's start by creating a compelling logo design. We'll first start by looking for a typography that captures this vibe. I'm looking for a phone that reflects this family-friendly vibe. I know this is not how you describe a phone, but you'd get this feel from certain phones. Like, think of your local family-friendly product and try to observe how their logo captures this feel. Okay, so I downloaded a load of new phones to choose from. Now I've opened my illustrator and we're gonna create a new file with four artboards, then I'll click create. Now I'll use the text tool and type bake today. Let's increase its size a bit. Now I'll duplicate this several times and next I'll try out all the phones I've downloaded. We'll now start eliminating the ones that are a bit off. The first one's out. It reminds me of Bake Roll's logo. <laughs> I'll leave the second and the third ones. This is too thin. I actually love this K, I'll mark it for now. I don't like this one. Nope, this one's out and this one too. Okay, let's clear this up. It's overwhelming to choose when you've got a lot of options. They're all great, but I just need to narrow down my choices. I like this A actually. Love the vibe of the Y here. Okay, so you see where I'm getting at with this logo? I'm not using a single font, but rather multiple ones to just come up with the ideal typography. So fast forward, I pulled out the letters I liked from their corresponding typography and will now arrange them, adjust their size and the kerning. I created this rectangle to act as my guide. Now that we're all set, I'll start customizing my logo. I'm going for a stacked logo since I like how the B and the T align together. And right next to the E, we can draw a minimalist illustration of a pancake stack with dripping honey. The O looks too thin, so in order to balance out the letters width, I'll narrow down the counter of the. So fast forward to the final logo, I extended the curve of the A, and for the K, I narrowed down this notch slightly to make the legs appear to be splashing out. And I made the bottom a bit rounded, matching the consistency of pancake batter spills. Now for the Y, I made the edges quite rounded too, and overall I made sure to smoothen out any sharp angles. And I finally drew a minimalist pancake stack with some drippings on it. Now let's create our color palette. Since this brand produces different pancake kit flavors, we'll keep the typography in white while the background color will vary according to the flavors such as banana yellow, raspberry red, blueberry, and chocolate brown. So here are the final versions of the logo. Now let's start designing the brand illustrations and pattern. In a new artboard, I started by writing down ideas for the illustrations I'll draw. Since making pancakes is made too simple using this kit, you just need water though, I wanted to draw the basic utensils needed to make pancakes, like a pan, a whisk, ladle, a bowl to mix them in, a spatula, and in order to visualize it, I use Unsplash to find copyright free images of the ideas I had. And next, I started aligning each image. I want to create a simple pattern, so unlike my usual style where I add more depth and dimension to my illustrations, those illustrations are minimalist. So I'm gonna leave the strokes as they are without adding a fill to each illustration. I'm gonna take this as a chance to brag about my baking and cooking skills. I actually failed five times before I got the batter right. I always make sure to get rid of the mess before anyone comes in and sees it. Now I finally create a perfect batter, but I somehow burn my pancakes. So back to my artboard, I'll just rearrange them a little and select them all. Next, I'll click on Object, then Pattern, and then Make. 
this tab will appear. So basically we got the primary unit at the center and the rest is a repeated pattern for you to visualize. If you want to adjust an illustration, you adjust the original one at the center and the rest gets automatically edited. So here I kept adjusting the illustration's position, rotating and resizing them just to make this pattern a little more seamless flowing smoothly without any big awkward gaps in between. Now let's jump into the most exciting part of this video, creating the packaging. I'll use Pigdora to help me out. If you haven't heard about it, Pigdora is a site that offers you more than 5,000 mockups, dye line templates, 3D models, and recently they added the AI background generator, which we'll use in this project. When you scroll down, you can see a list of items like t-shirts, cups, tubes, containers, literally everything you're looking for. Anyways, I'll now click on the box mockups, and this stuck in box is the one that I'm looking for. On clicking it, it redirects you to the dashboard where you find this 3D model. You can rotate it by just dragging it, and right at the bottom, you will find this open and close bar. It allows you to visualize how the box looks when opened, semi opened, and closed. I find this quite helpful because I'm hard at visualizing the die lines and how they would look when folded, which part is the front of the package, which part is the back. So here on the left, you upload your design and beneath, you can edit the dimensions of the box as you like. Now, most importantly, we click on download die lines. So here's how it goes. You first download the die line, then using Illustrator or Figma, you create your design on top of it. And then finally, you upload your design back on Pictora and it does the entire job. So now we got two options, Illustrator die line and PDF. I'm gonna download the Illustrator extension since that's where I'll design everything. Now I downloaded it and I'll go back to Illustrator and open that die line file. So here you'll find a new window for the die lines and right at the top you will find all the technical details, the dimensions, thickness of the material and the other stuff. Remember when on Pacdora there was an upload your image text in this area? This tells us that this part is the front of the packaging. So we'll first start by designing that part. I'll go back to my draft board and copy the blueberry version. This is the one that we're gonna start with. Then paste it on this die line. I'll reduce its size a little bit. Now I want to add the pattern we created earlier. So back to my draft board, I'll create a small square using the rectangle tool. And from the splashes panel, I'll select the pattern we created earlier. I'll now copy that square and paste it here. Now we're facing an issue. That square that was small on the other tab appears quite large here, meaning that the pattern as well is awkwardly huge. So in order to fix this, we'll double click on the pattern in the splashes tab. Let's zoom out a little. Now you can edit the entire pattern by just selecting the original editable ones at the center. Now there is just awkward spacing in between, so in order to fix this, click on Size Style to Art. I like this new size, so I'll just click on Done. Let's try it out. Yep, looks good. But I just need to make it a little smaller. Okay, so I want to draw a pancake stack at the bottom center of the front side. So I'll go back to Unsplash again to get some ideas, and back to Illustrator, I'll create a new artboard and place the images I liked. Now I'll draw over this image, I like to make the edges a little uneven. I'll definitely change that blue outline, so please ignore it. I don't know why when I illustrate I pick a random color for the outlines. So lastly I made the top surface of each pancake darker than the edges, and finally I added some dark spots on the pancake surface just to add some texture to it. Now let's add these cute pancakes on the package. So I'll copy them paste it there. I'll also use the shortcut Ctrl plus G to group them so that I can resize them easily. Alright, I should have placed the logo and the other elements in a layer different from the background just to keep things more organized. So I'll just select them, click on Ctrl plus X to cut them. Then back on a new layer, I'll paste them. Alright, let's add the pattern in the background layer. I'll use a rectangle tool to draw a rectangle on the top half of the packaging. I'll use a pattern from the swatches as the fill. And here we go. But this logo is barely legible from afar. So I'll use a rectangle tool and draw a blue rectangle just behind the logo so that we create a nice contrast between the logo and the background. Let's make the edges more rounded by dragging one of the corners. Yeah, looks great. 
Now I want to add a divider at the center. So I was planning on adding a rectangle with regularly jagged sides. I'm using the rectangle tool for this. Just a second, let me resize the pancakes. Perfect. Let's use a vanilla shade for the rectangle. Notice that I broke the pancakes at the front using the shortcut I'll leave on the screen or you can just do that by clicking on the objects tab, arrange, then send to front. To make the side slightly jagged, I'll use the line tool and draw a horizontal line at the upper side. I'll increase its thickness a little. Now we'll keep the line selected, then click on the effect tab, then distort and transform, then zigzag. So we got two options. The first one it is the steepness of the ridge, while the second one it is the frequency. We'll make them a little less steep, and here we go. I'll copy this down by pressing on Alt plus Shift and dragging the line to the bottom at the same time. I'll select both strokes and from the Object tab, I'll click on Expand Appearance. This converts the strokes into shapes. Now we want to cut this rectangle, so I'll select both zigzag lines plus the rectangle, and I'll click on the window tab to open the pathfinder options and next I'll click on minus front. Hmm, I should have made this exactly a little less steep. I kept the bottom side straight and the other side less jagged. Now I want to move the pancakes down a bit and extend the rectangle a little so that it fits the word blueberry that we'll add at the center. So fast forward, I designed the rest of the packaging, added the nutritional value, ingredients and a scan me. And I highlighted the unique ceiling point of this brand on one of the sides. And finally, I'll just export it as a transparent PNG. So now we're ready to create a realistic mockup. So I'll get back to Pigdora, click on the box mockups, then tuck in the box. It usually takes a few seconds to load. Now we're gonna upload our design by clicking here on that left square. The design appears here when it's uploaded, so I'll click on it to add it. And now I'll just drag the corners to fit the design on the die line. Perfect, now I'll click on save so that it redirects us to the 3D mockup generator. Look at this, I'm loving it already. But let's customize this. The background option on the left panel allows you to change the color. You can use a gradient or just a plain color. I'll keep this aside and click on the 3D design above. So this is a more realistic version and we got several models on the left to choose from. One thing I adore about Pegdora is that they automatically save everything on your dashboard. So you shouldn't worry if your PC just decided to crash in the middle. Anyways, I'll try out this model. I'll definitely use this image in my Caruso. When you drag the mockups around, you get to see all the angles. And suppose I like this angle and I wanted to export this as a PNG. I'll leave it as it is and click on Super Render. You can choose your file type and quality and then click on Export. Now let's try other mockups. I like this one because it displays the back of the packaging too. Let's try this one. Yeah, I really like this one. They even added this tab on the right so that you can choose your colors. I'll pick this one and export it. Now let's try out the AI background generator to create more mockups. I'll click on the create AI background option in my workspace and here I'll upload my mockup. I picked the transparent ones I exported earlier. When you scroll down, you see a bunch of backgrounds you can use. They are categorized into nature, florals, art space, and many more just to help you keep your background theme consistent with your product. So I'm going for a tabletop and I'll click generate. So it generated two mockups. The second one feels more realistic, honestly, so I think I'll go for it. But let me see the other options. Yeah, this one looks better. This tool becomes a deck thing that I started generating more mockups for the other flavors. I seriously love this tool and I love how Pegdora keeps leveling up, adding extra features for the same price. If you're loving it already as much as I do, you can use my promo code BOSSEN and get 20% off your subscription. I want to pause here and say that BOSSEN is a place where I share authentic videos documenting my graphic design journey and I want it to be as authentic as possible. That's my purpose, so I usually don't add sponsored videos on my channel and I don't unless I truly appreciate the product and find it quite helpful for us designers or anyone else. I always thought I needed to learn Blender to do this, which is definitely tough to do when I'm already struggling to manage my time as a graphic designer and a dental student. I think this is the first time to say this out loud. 
So anyways, I'll now leave you with the final brand identity. I really like how it turned out. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm seeing a lot of you guys liking my recent branding videos, so I'll keep sharing more of my branding design journey and keep you part of it. Thank you so much for watching.